7 o'clock, I'll call the meeting to order, please. And a motion to adopt the agenda, please. Okay, Reimer and Blanchett. And we have some additions. We do have um, two amendments. One okay. is an invitation to our elected officials to an emergency. Okay. Um, okay. Mr. Young is um, there. You go. Distributing the um, letter from the British Columbia Emergency Management. Oh yeah. Okay. This was an email. Correct. And the other is a proposed resolution to the Trans Canada Yellowhead Highway Association AGM Correct. in April. All right. So a separate motion then to adopt as amended or just add as amended. Okay. Blanchett and Reimer. Okay. Are there, is there anything further to add? Nothing. Okay. Any questions? All in favor? Carried. I want to take a moment before we um, continue here to welcome Director Daniel Allen, our Regional District Director for Area H. Thank you. And welcome again this evening. We're always very happy to see you and visiting politicians are always welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Agenda item three is to adopt the minutes of the um, March 10th regular meeting of council, 3.1. Blanchett and Torgerson. Are there any errors or omissions? Not that you could find, okay. All in favor? Carried. Adoption of the minutes of the March 17th, 2015 special meeting of council. Blanchett and Torgerson, okay. Any questions or discussion there? Hearing none, all in favor? Carried. And reporting out from the February 16th, 2015 special in-camera meeting. Motion please, that council reports. At, no, oh, sorry? No resolution is required. Okay, so we're just reporting it then. Okay. It received. Received, okay. Okay. 3.4. Reporting out from the March 10th, 2015 in-camera meeting. And this is just for a receipt as well. No resolution required. Correspondence for action, 6.1. The City of Port Moody requests support for resolution regarding proposed closure of Burrard Thermal Plant as forwarded to the Union of British Columbia Municipalities, Lower Mainland Local Government Association, British Columbia Utilities Commission, and other local governments in British Columbia. The staff recommendation is that Council supports the City of Port Moody's resolution regarding the proposed closure of the Burrard Thermal Plant. What is Council's wish? Has there been any um, consultation with BC Hydro or, or the province or the ministry that has this in their portfolio? Yeah, the uh, City of Port Moody has been in contact with BC Hydro on this matter extensively. Okay. What is Council's wish then? I would support a letter. You would support a letter? Mm -hmm. Yeah, essentially they're just asking. Sorry. Uh, yes, Councilor. Uh, they're just, the, right now BC Hydro is currently importing power cheaper than they can make it. And mild winters, uh, other IPPs are okay. generating. So th what they're asking is, is just for a review of okay. uh, all power sources because in this uh, background report, their uh, investigations have led them to believe that they'll be short of power should this Burrard Inlet or Burrard Thermal Plant be closed as it currently generates 900 megawatts. Okay, so you're satisfied then that they have the expertise in the city of Port Moody to overrule what BC Hydro says? You're satisfied with that? Okay. They, they're just looking for a best case scenario and in, a, in their mind it's to keep that plant open until at least a review has been sought. Yeah. Okay, and I'm just mentioning that because uh, the village uh, did support Hudson's Hope in their um, request for support and um, the Minister of Energy and Mines was in Prince George on Thursday and 
what he had to say somehow didn't correlate with is there something that you yeah. know that we do not? I don't. I just know. Okay. I just have. Um, I've always relied on BC Hydro or provincial ministries to know what they're doing. Sure. And so that's why I always want to hear what their side would be. This plant, according to their information, though, yeah. is also running at a better spot than some of the other ones that they're keeping open. Okay. All right. I'm just wanting to make sure that council is satisfied. Okay. All in favor of uh, supporting the city of Port Moody then? Carried. The reading file, 7.1. It's already received. Okay, ratification notice and uh, 7.2. That's received as well. List of nominees for chief and council. Does anybody from council want to comment on that? Yeah, uh, it's good to see Keith making a run for chief, as well as council. Okay. Good. He is a former chief, is he not? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And uh, Tom Eustache, who's a candidate for council, is a huge mm -hmm. uh, mountain bike park enthusiast and supporter for this project up in here. Good. That's good. Okay. If there's nothing further to bring forward from the reading file, administrative reports, economic development officer, and we have uh, Mr. Gislamberti is present this evening. Staff recommendation that Council supports the Canada Geothermal Western Economic Diversification Canada application to hold an exposition in Vailmount. What is Council's wish? Okay, Councillor Reimer and seconded by Councillor Blanchett that Council uh, supports the um, application. Is there any discussion? Mr. Gislamberti is present. If you, councillors, this is a really good opportunity for them. Okay. You know. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Carried. Eight point three from the Economic Development Officer, February thirteenth, Community to Community Forum. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Missed one. Eight point two. Okay. All right. It's the Economic Development Officer again, the Veilmount Promotion Video. Staff recommendation is that Council receives the Veilmount Promotion Video created under the supervision of the Economic Development Unit of the BC Ministry of Jobs, Tourism and Skills Training, and that the video be showcased on Veilmount's webpage. Has any of Council seen it? No, we can't see it you're, yet. You're going to be seeing it. We will be shortly. seeing it. Okay. I'll have a motion, please, to accept the recommendation, Blanchett and Torgerson. Okay, any discussion or questions? Let's, uh, can't could, wait to see it. Can't wait to see it? Okay. Have you ever imagined being surrounded by natural beauty, clean air, and pristine water, wishing you could live and work there and never have to leave? The people of Valmau invite you to stop and ask yourself, why don't you stay? Residents and tourists enjoy amazing activities like skiing, mountain biking, river rafting, the famous Mount Robson Marathon. But when you walk around town, it's clear that Valmount is also a real place to live. Valmount's local businesses provide a real richness and stability to the town. Their resilience despite global economic challenges shows the passion residents hold for the community. I fell in love with the place as a kid and uh, I decided to spend my life here and try to make a living uh, doing uh, something fun and interesting. Together, the community has chartered a clear course for prosperity. And with a reputation as a welcoming community, new businesses have opened, and the town's population is steadily increasing. To open a business here, uh, there's just so much opportunity, and that's one of the reasons we did. It was kind of a blank canvas. We could come in, and there wasn't a brewery here, and there's lots of other businesses that could be found. And it's such a beautiful place. We were driving along, and she goes, well, you drink enough beer, why don't you make it? And I said, okay. <laughs> Valmount has the quality of life and technology infrastructure to attract the lone eagle crowd, those entrepreneurs, freelancers, and knowledge workers who can live and work anywhere. Valmount welcomes potential major developments, like a ski destination resort or Canada's first geothermal power project. But the town is focused on driving incremental improvements to their economy allowing existing businesses to sustainably grow 
while making room for new ones. So if wild beauty, a vibrant community, and endless opportunity fit your lifestyle, come to stay and make Valemount home. Any comments or? That was wonderful. Okay. Good. 8.3. Could we have a motion? We have a motion. Uh, Where? Councilor's plan shed in Ferguson under 8.2. Okay. And uh, that's to uh, accept the staff recommendation. All in favor? Carry. 8.3 Economic Development Officer, February 13th, Community to Community Forum. And the staff recommendation is that Council receives the report from the EDO regarding the February 13th Community to Community Forum between representatives of the Village of Vailmount and Simp First Nation for information only. Motion, Blanchett and Reimer. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Carried. 8.4, Committee Terms of Reference with respect to the Public Works Committee. And this is uh, the staff recommendation again that Council approves the terms of reference for the Village of Vailmount Public Works Committee and Community Use Agreement Committee. Motion please, Torgerson and Blanchett, and it's open for discussion. Are there any comments or, yes, Councillor Torgerson? In uh, Section B, Guiding Principles, will that also include uh, development opportunities and upgrades at the airport? I mean, it, it is a broad sense that the identify risks and, I, and opportunities. So, I mean, will it get more specific from there as, as, the, as the committee meets? This is a guiding principle okay. as opposed to a, a specific action item. Good. It should be overarching for all of that. Thank you. Okay. I would think that anything that comes under public works, but it is a final, it's a council decision. Okay. All right, is there anything further that Council wishes to uh, discuss? Yes, Councillor um, Blanchett. Under the community use agreement, um, I see that we've dropped a committee member. That's Did, because... Was there two previously? There were two plus myself. Because as a standing committee, half of the committee members have to be councillors. Okay. So we could either add a councillor or drop it. Well, because Councillor Salt was um, assigned to the community use, wasn't she, or am I confusing it with, I'm pretty sure she was assigned as well, or was she a backup? I don't recall. <laughs> Just it's nice to have, um, because it is a community <coughs> use agreement for the school, it's nice to have a few more committee community members than just council. Let's check to see if there was a resolution mm -hmm. to add okay. another councillor. Okay. okay, that's good. Well, it's uh, one member from the school user group, one village council, and one non-voting staff. So you've got two from the village anyway, and just one from the school user group. Yeah. So are you think? Uh, oh, I'm thinking that there's already Councillor Salt and myself, so that would entitle us to one more community member. Correct. Okay. I thought that there was just one member of the village council. If we could just confirm that. Yeah, I think that Councillor Salt was the... Uh, Alternate? It was the alternate. Okay. We'll, we'll confirm. Okay. We'll confirm that. Yeah. Yes. Sure. And I think the uh, thought was that we don't need two councillors appointed to everything. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Didn't you say you were on 17 committees or something? At one point, yeah. At one point. Okay. But not anymore. No, 14. Oh, 14. Okay. All right. So if there's no further uh, questions or discussion, all in favor? Carried. Proposed temporary use permit, Canoe Valley Community Association. That council approves initial consideration of um, TUP 0115, formerly TUP 0213, to allow public assembly as a permitted use at 1012A 3rd Avenue and direct staff to notify surrounding property owners and arrange a public hearing for same. Motion please, Blanchett and Reimer. And it's open for discussion. Yes, Councillor um, Blanchett. What happens after 2018? Because they can't renew their permit. What happens then? 
Um, if I may. Yes. There are a couple of options. Um, the first is that they would find another place. The other option is um, they could potentially seek, uh, with the property owner's agreement, uh, to rezone the site. They could make an application to rezone the site to support that use. Of course, it is. It would be three years away from now, so there's, certainly there's nothing guaranteed about that. Either. No, I know. I just wanted to know what happens. You know, I mean, it's 2018. Our term's up. They're going to be re having to renew, and you know, I just don't want to leave everybody in a lurch because mm -hmm. it's you know really well used area. Yes, and they have understanding too that they have been operating with a temporary use permit for the last two years as well, so they mm -hmm. knew that going into it. They have applied for the extension, as you know. Um, it doesn't change their options. I mean, if they were to find another place okay. during that three-year period, uh, they could certainly move as well. Okay. Okay. Unless, unless the terms of their lease agreement with the owners uh, is for three years. Okay. So the rezoning is going to be their only option if they don't want to move. That, that's correct. Anything further, Councillor Torgerson? Uh, a question for Mr. Young, and that's typically a rezoning application process is six months, eight? Typical ones. A typical one would be, say, six months. A skilled applicant uh, who was willing to uh, provide all the materials and knew what they were getting into, and as well as meeting any requirements of the village right set in terms of a development agreement could potentially do it more quickly. Uh, a, less, a less skilled applicant, one who does not have any prior experience in a rezoning process, it could take significantly longer. Um, and if they also do not have the wherewithal to cover any kind of uh, cost that might be attributable, say, through a development agreement, they might not actually be able to achieve it. Thank you. Is, is there an easier way for them? I'm just, just in case they decide to, they want to stay there and three years is up. Um, rezoning is the only way. And, well, the other thing too is that, uh, bearing in mind that they do not own the property. Correct. So ultimately, the question too has to be put to the property owners. Um, what are their intentions for the property? Mm -hmm. That's a very significant question. Um, it may be, they may be perfectly satisfied with the temporary use for that for the time being, hoping that there will be someone else uh, who will come along after three years who will find that space attractive uh, or more attractive under the existing zone. Okay, and um, let's assume that they stay in that place, everything stays the same. Will we give them fair enough long and um, ahead, uh, oh good lord, sorry. Um, time enough to get the paperwork ready for them to rezone if they need to go that route? We can certainly uh, do our best to provide them with advance notice, six months notice, for okay. example. Yeah. Okay. Or perhaps on the anniversary, we can make, uh, give them a year's notice. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and I say that uh, bearing in mind what my comments were to Councillor Torgerson. Uh, Unless I'm mistaken, I do not believe that they are a skilled development applicant and they will need more time than okay. six months. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Reimer? Madam Chair, the other alternative is that uh, Council can expand the permitted uses or mm -hmm. instead of qualifying this under public assembly, mm -hmm. call it a meeting hall which could fall under the under the current use okay. so that would entail what that too would also involve the, the, the zoning amendment okay um, currently uh, staff is investigating uh, the question of uh, meeting halls or religious assembly mm -hmm. in the C1 zone mm -hmm. um, and with those prejudice in the research that we're presently doing, I think it would be fair to say that we, we should be very careful about how quickly we expand the uses before we turn around and actually analyze this. Okay. Yeah. 
And perhaps, uh, Councillor Reimer, some research could be done. Did you not say that in, was it in the city of Prince George that in C1 they have 56 uses and Van only has 20? That's correct. Yes. And um, we can look into why all of the restrictions here and open it up a little bit, if possible, to accommodate our people here instead of just telling them no every time we, yeah. That is certainly an option. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, again, without prejudicing yes. the, yeah. the work okay. that we're presently doing, um, for example, speaking of the C1 zone, mm -hmm. uh, the C1 zone, um, and I don't, I don't care to compare it with Prince George because okay. the circumstances are different. Yes. But we list, I think it is now 20 or 21 uses okay. within the C1 zone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, a more modern bylaw typically has broader definitions. Mm -hmm. um, and so instead of listing 20 or so uses mm -hmm. individually, a commercial definition can be broad enough mm -hmm. that it acts as an umbrella for many other mm -hmm. types Correct. of businesses. Good. The example that I like to raise is that of a butcher. Mm -hmm. um, and um, from my own experience, knowing where an applicant had unwisely had signed a purchase agreement for a property, thinking that, well, every, it's, it's a retail operation. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, the butcher shop was not allowed under the zone, and so he actually wound up experiencing a six-month delay, um, and he wound up having to sell other things in the interim. That's not something that we would desire to see. Yeah. Correct. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a very good example, and I just uh, really feel that perhaps we can look at uh, expanding it somewhat. So without, uh, as you say, prejudicing your research and findings and whatever that we can accommodate uh, the, the taxpayers better. Yes? One further comment. Okay. Um, in the discussions that will occur a little bit later this evening mm -hmm. related to budget, um, I might need to speak on this particular matter again mm -hmm. okay. um, in relation to the official community plan and zoning. Okay. Very good. Okay. Good. Thank you, Mr. Young. Yeah, we're easy. 8.5, we have a motion. Yes. Yes, motion 8.5. It was uh, Reimer and Blanchett. And is, if there are no further questions, are you, you ready for the vote? All in favor? All carried. Staffing update report. Staff recommendation that Council receives the March 24th, 2015 staffing update report for information only. Motion to receive for information. Councillors Torgerson and Blanchett. Are there any questions? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, all in favor? Oh, you have a question, uh, okay. Danielle's last name, pronunciation, please. I believe it's Disarink. So, thank you. Okay, anything further? All in favor? Carried. 9.1, Village of Vailmount five year financial amendment bylaw, number 737, 2015. Okay, 2015, not 20. That's okay. Staff recommendation that Council approves. First and second reading of five-year financial plan, or financial plan bylaw number 738, 2015, with the following amendments completed after the March 17, 2015 presentation. Yes, I've just noticed uh, with yes. respect that there's a typographic error here. Okay. This, the citation is bylaw 737, and the recommendation should be 737, not 738. Okay. Well, Councillors noted that change, 737 and not 738, thank you. Okay, one, addition of $50,000 towards crack sealing the airport and Fifth Avenue with expenses being offset by reserved surplus set aside for this purpose. And two, tax revenues increased by 2% over and above the 2% cost of living allowance increase to allow for an additional $11,500 in revenues. What is council's wish? I'll make that motion. Okay, moved by Councillor Torgerson, seconded by Councillor Blanchett. That first and second reading be given to the five year financial plan bylaw number 737. Any questions? Yes, Councillor Reimer. <coughs> uh, Madam Chair, when it refers to Fifth Avenue, uh, they're t we're talking about crack sealing the 
pavement. Various places where there's uh, been some erosion of pavement. Yes, I believe that's it. Sorry, I didn't catch the comment. And ha have we received an estimate for that? It's based on uh, previous times when we've contracted um, contracted for this service. We try to contract um, or use contractors that LDM brings in, which really reduces our costs for us. Okay. So this uh, crack ceiling is uh, premised then on previous work? Correct. Done in the village? Correct. Okay. Well, I see that the district manager is present, so we'll have to give him a thanks and gratitude afterwards. Are there any further questions? Hearing none, all in favor of first and second reading. Carried. Council reports. I'll, I'll do it alphabetically. Councillor Blanchett. Okay, uh, March 11th, uh, the Healthy Communities Committee um, excitedly grant, uh, gave a grant of $2,000 to the breakfast program. They're buying pots, pans, shelving. Um, March 12th was our CBT night. We had a great turnout and the presentations were terrific. March 16th was my first RVSS meeting in McBride. It's a really great board, lots of energy, lots of drive. Uh, there's exciting things coming out. March 17th was the budget review. Uh, Lori gave a great presentation that I could actually understand. Uh, the 18th was the CBT committee we met and went over the applications and I would just like to thank everybody that has ever been involved with that because it is a grueling experience. Um, it's really hard to spread that money out. Um, the 20th was the VGD public information night and we had a really good turnout. Uh, tons of great questions um, and they're coming back in a month or two. I believe Steve said. That's it. That's all she wrote to. Councillor Reimer. And I was actually working from a different address. <laughs> we know by the number of emails. <laughs> Thank you. And my different address is where I hang my hat, and I happen to have a hat in Yuma. Good. Uh, <clears throat> so I, I did attend. Uh, Valmont Community Forest AGM on February 16th by Skype mm -hmm. and I attended Valmont Community Forest Board Meeting by Skype on March 2nd. Thank you Mr. Torgerson for your help and Very assistance. Um, so Skype does need to be tuned up a little bit. It certainly works but it needs some audio tuning. Uh, there was a constant sound of as if wind blowing through a narrow gap we thought uh, it was the air conditioner in this <laughs> <laughs> it, it was somewhat better when I muted the mic on my end and I could hear a little bit better, but uh, <clears throat> I say the, the audio, being able to hear what's going on is rather a challenge. Uh, however, it was possible to engage on one of the items of the agenda on the, uh, on the March 2nd meeting. And for the freedom of being able to be out of town and still participate, I want to encourage us to move forward on this electronic communication technology as quickly as possible. And that's my Thank report. You. I believe that the uh, regional district uh, is allowed three times a year. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Reimer. Councillor Torgerson. Oh, on uh, the 17th, I had a uh, the budget review. Uh, thank you. Uh, Director of Finance McNee. On uh, that same uh, day, I had a VARTA meeting. The despite conditions this year, uh, they still had a substantially decent year. Uh, Forty days short, unfortunately, but still uh, received about twelve thousand users. Uh, the four trailheads. Uh, they had uh, chapel, not so great for business. Uh, it's a small area, so gets tracked out pretty easy and without fresh snow we have uh, access is <coughs> challenging. Um, on the 19th, I had a Chamber of Commerce meeting. We have the business walk coming at us to um, interview uh, 
the small businesses around town, um, see what's working, see what's not working, their challenges, what could make it bigger, what their needs are, uh, which could also work in conjunction with the um, NDIT facade program for upgrading. Uh, the Belmont Chamber received a bursary uh, to attend the uh, BC Chamber ATM <coughs> in Prince George. Uh, and on the 20th, I attended the Belmont Glacier Destinations public presentation. Okay. okay. I want to thank you, Councillor Torgerson, for chairing and presiding over the last council meeting so that I could be in Yorkton, Saskatchewan to celebrate my mother's 96th birthday. And she certainly doesn't look it. She had a wonderful time, as we all did. So thank you again for chairing that meeting. Now, uh, last, uh, let's see, the 18th and the 19th, uh, I was in Prince George, Regional District, Fraser Fort George, attended the swearing-in ceremonies, and I hope that I pronounced this correctly, for the Clay Latine Chief and Council. Um, they um, had a very special evening of dinner, and the swearing-in ceremonies were certainly very interesting to see. Also attended a breakfast meeting with um, Minister Bond, Jobs, Tourism, Skills, Training and Labor, Minister Bill Bennett, Energy and Mines, uh, Minister Mary Polak, Minister of Environment, and Minister Todd Stone, Minister of Transportation and Infrastructure. And it was um, invitation only, and um, learned some very interesting um, facts that uh, will be affecting even them out in the future. And uh, I also um, attended I think that was March the 17th, our uh, Area H Director Danielle Allen and uh, the McBride Mayor, Terry McKeon and Dana from the Regional District Fraser Fort George, as well as uh, the staff, EDO and CAO regarding the Robson Valley Marketing Strategy was here. And I think that was it. Okay, so that's my report. And, and I could always Write that down so that you don't have to. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. And I guess I'm, I'm just a motion uh, to receive the reports. Okay. Torgerson and Blanchett. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Carried. So moving on yes. to uh, 11. This is uh, New business. Yellowhead uh, Bridge. Yes. Yeah. Okay. New business. Okay, new business, and I believe everybody has a copy of the proposed resolution to the Trans-Canada Yellowhead Highway Association. And I want to thank Mr. Young for um, doing this so quickly for us. The um, March 31st is the deadline, and I'm going to share it also with uh, our uh, director, Alan, Area H, because this... As a matter of fact, the Regional District of Fraser Fort George has more Yellowhead highways within the Regional District than any other um, district in, in the province. Okay, so I'll read it out for uh, Council. It's uh, Highway Safety Improvements for Highways 5 and 16, key parts of the Trans Canada Yellowhead Highway. Whereas highway safety on the Trans Canada Yellowhead Highway is a significant concern for residents, businesses, communities, and governments in, the, in and near the highway corridor. And whereas significant losses of life have occurred on the Trans Canada Yellowhead Highway between Kamloops and Prince George, highways 5 and 16 in recent years, including three deaths near Vailmount, BC in late 2014 and early 2015. Therefore, be it resolved that the village of Vailmount wishes the Trans Canada Yellowhead Highway Association to petition the province of British Columbia to advance the twinning of highways 5 and 16 and or develop additional passing lanes along the highways to improve highway safety in the these corridors. Could I have a motion, please? Blanchett and Reimer. And there, are there any questions or any discussion? Hmm, hearing none, all in favor? Carried. I want to thank you again. And at the um, Trans Canada Yellowhead Highway Association, each province has its own caucus meeting, and most uh, provinces. In fact, when I was active, every province there would be a ministerial representation at the caucus meeting. 
And the next um, item is the uh, Emergency Management BC, and it's a letter to Mayor and Council, Chair and Board. Emergency Management BC would like to invite you, your representatives, and the Emergency Program Coordinator to participate in one of the senior and elected officials' workshops offered this spring. Motion to receive this, please. Okay, Blanchett and Reimer. And is there an interest from any particular councillor to attend? I believe that Councillor Salt is um, yeah. council's. Um, yes. You're, you look, you're looking at me, so no, I. That was the same okay. question as your okay. worship council. Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. Councillor Salt's on the list. Do you recall the presentation that was made to council? Um, Perhaps a year ago, by Michael Higgins. Yeah, it's very. This is very similar to that. This okay. training, if that helps. Is there a date by which we have to respond or RSVP? They simply said as early as possible. Okay. Okay. So in Prince George, it's on April the twenty fourth. Correct. Salt if she in a week or so, okay. if she wishes to attend. Okay. We can do that. Yes, Councillor Torgerson? Uh, Your Worship, are you in Council Gar or Cranbrook, June 16th or 27th? June? June 27th? I'm in, um, at the end of May, I'm in Revelstoke. Okay. But I can check the dates, and uh, if I'm anywhere near there, I would um, participate, but I'll check the dates. We could also probably ask Michael Higgins to come back and okay. do another presentation. It was very good. He said he would come any time. Okay. Yeah. I'm just wondering if this is more comprehensive and if more officials there. A, a networking opportunity as well. Yeah. Okay. We can defer this until Councillor Salt returns. Sure. Okay. So, uh, when do we have to let them know, though? It would probably be Prince George, and it's on April the 24th. So, yes. Now, presently you have a motion uh, to, receive this. to receive. Yes. Uh, if this was to be deferred, the next council meeting, the regular council meeting, is April 14th. Okay, which that's too late. Very much time. That's right. All right, what is Council's wish? Do we just, um, if Councillor Salt is unable to attend, do we have an alternate? Well, there is a Cameron's meeting on the 11th. Of May? May? Yeah. Which would give a little bit longer time. Okay. But don't forget we have NCLGA the first week of May. Correct. Yes. All right. Is there an alternate? that would, would attend if Councillor Salt can't to go to Prince George? I'm not here that day. You're not here on the 24th? Is it just for the day? It would be just for the day. I can have a look in my calendar. Get back to you. All right, let's... Um, I'll, I'll just take a vote on receipt and we can leave this for uh, several days. Okay, good. All in favor of receipt? Carried. And we'll just set that aside. List of outstanding previous council resolutions. That council accepts the list of outstanding previous council resolutions. Councillor Blanchett and Councillor Torgerson. Any discussion? Everybody is busy. Isn't that the truth? Okay. Yes, Councillor Torgerson. Uh, has there been more information received from the applicant for the development variance? 0115? Uh, as a matter of fact, yes. The uh, uh, building inspector, uh, the village's building inspector, has spoken with uh, the applicant. Um, and uh, in order to obtain additional information uh, from the applicant, 
uh, the applicant um, considered the matter and has decided to withdraw the application. Formally approved. A letter will be sent by the village to the applicant uh, later this week. Thank you. To, ac to accept the withdrawal. Is That's that right. it? Okay. Okay. All in favor of receipt. Carried. Calendar of events. Cool. Whoops. That was. We have a mover and a seconder on that. I thought it was Torgerson and Blanchett. Just to confirm. Yes, okay. Thank you. Okay, good. And the uh, calendar of events for March and April 2015. There's no resolution. No, and I see that. And But does anybody have any comment or question about anything? Okay. Uh, I yes? do, uh, just to let everybody know, um, it's not on here, but it, the Velma Community Forest Office is currently closed. Uh, staff are on much needed holidays. Uh, there isn't much business going on with the warmer weather and quote unquote breakup. Most roads are on a um, load restriction ban, so this is a good time for them to head off south and enjoy what they need to be doing. Okay. And with respect to the allocations, uh, there should be a decision coming fairly quickly, I certainly hope. We had a teleconference call on Friday mm -hmm. while I was still in Prince George with uh, Minister Bond and the Ministry of Forests uh, ADM and um, staff in Victoria and uh, Carrier, Terry Kuzma and the McBride and Vailmount managers and the McBride mayor and I. And you're also attending the Premier dinner on the 17th? Oh yes, but before then is the Council of Forest Industries uh, first week in April. Good. And uh, the manager of the Vailmount Community Forest is attending as well. Good. And uh, just for Council's information, uh, my registration and hotel room is paid. <laughs> okay. By Kofi, Council of Forest Industries. Okay. So it won't cost the taxpayers anything. And I see the CAO smiling. She's <laughs> <laughs> always makes me smile. <laughs> That's right. Okay. So it's time now for public comments. And is there anybody who in present who wishes to make a comment? Mr. Johnson. Okay. Paul Johnson, 1129th Avenue. Uh, with the council considering changing um, seven uses of C1, I think it might be a good subject for the planning commission. To uh, look at it and possibly help you guys out. I think that's a good idea, thank you. Okay. You've made note of that. That's right. And delegate some of the uh, decision, or not decision, but uh, research. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Is there anything, anybody else who wishes to uh, make a comment? Okay, not at this time. All right. Motion to uh, that council receive the public comment. Torgerson and Reimer. All in favor? Carried. I'll take a motion now that council proceed to an in camera council meeting for consideration of two items as per section 91 C and D and G of the community charter. Councillors Reimer and Lanchette. All in favor? Carried. Well, Director Allen, it was nice to see you again. Always, always a pleasure. Good. 